people could see it later. So we have with us Tashina from VidActiva. And Tashina, would you give us a little intro? We are talking to overcomers, real stories, real people, and how you find empowerment to keep going forward. So tell us a little bit about yourself first. Absolutely. So um, starting from the very, very beginning, uh, I just had a really rough childhood. So I'm very open about that. I talk about that all the time. Um, sexual, physical, emotional abuse throughout my entire childhood. Um, growing up in a Christian home that was that affected me tremendously. And I got to the age of about 19 and I had a psychology class and it was very helpful for me. It, it explained to me very clearly that my behavior, my negative behavior at the time um, was really a result, normal reactions to abnormal things that had, had happened in my life. And so from that time forward, I really, that's when my whole self-development career started. Like if I, somebody told me I was negative, then I would go to Borders and I would buy a book on positivity. Like that's where me trying to overcome any of my personality traits or uh, things that I was going through at the time started out with. And then um, things started happening in my health life of, in 2012. And I had a whole slew of things high blood pressure, hormone issues, um, depression, uh, gut issues, <laughs> just in a, two accidents within six months. That all happened within um, a two to two and a half year period. And so I needed more solutions to overcome things physically, as well as, again, dealing with different emotions and not being able to process emotions. And so since then, um, I've become a holistic wellness coach. I collaborate with a company that provides solutions to that. And I openly share my journey of the things that I've gone through and definitely within the past year have realized a lot more emotional growth and a lot more emotional um, overcoming that I need to do being home alone, um, being divorced in the past four, and four years. Actually, I'm coming up on my four year <laughs> anniversary of my divorce. Um, the things that have happened in the news, not just dealing with, not processing even just the, 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 the social trauma of being a minority in this country and just all the things. There's been a lot more processing on the emotional side and things to overcome recently because of all of that. So with my company, Viva Activa, that's what I do. I uh, provide coaching as a certified holistic self-care, self-development coach as well as just continue to share my journey of what i'm going through on a weekly basis as i'm currently in the middle of another hormone issue and again all the emotional things wow that's a lot in a little <laughs> bit of time it's an awful lot on your shoulders and i know we've talked this past year or two and and you've talked about you know you're an extrovert yes you know it's been crazy right yeah, as an extreme extrovert, as an extreme extrovert that kept myself super, super busy. Um, and I think it, within the last week, I had a couple conversations with people about that. You know, it it was very hard for me when this started last year. And I would even almost sometimes get in arguments on, on group chats and stuff with people because people are like, um, why is it so hard to stay home? That's all you have to do is just stay home. Like for an extreme extrovert, I get energized by being around people. And for six months, I couldn't be around people, including my family. Mm -hmm. And the I somebody told me the the perfect illustration for Zoom. I am so grateful for Zoom. I'm so grateful for the people that I've collaborated with. You and I probably would have never done classes if it wasn't for this situation. I've met some of my newest best friends and in, in the world, and I'm so grateful for it. But for a person who literally gets energized with people, Zoom is like getting fed intravenously. Mm -hmm. And being with people is like having a home cooked meal. Mm -hmm. And we love it <laughs> and we will enjoy it, but it's never going to be the same for us. Right. And we will continue to talk about the gratitude and appreciation that we have this these medium and that we've learned it. But at the end of the day, it's still emotionally draining for any extreme extrovert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So besides Zoom, what are some of the things that have helped you cope with not only that, but everything else too? 
So, and, and that's another blessing, uh, journaling. I started journaling again. I started writing poetry again. I actually um, did a little bit of drawing um, and then really focusing on my emotional health, like really focusing on my emotional health. I had been using essential oils for emotions, making sure I always have my diffuser, using the feelings kit for that. I was using that on a regular basis, like when I was going through my divorce and doing certain things. But again, being alone with my thoughts and the things that I started to come up were were deeper core wounds and it needed more work. And it was like, do I go back to therapy? Do I see if I need medication? And just realizing from speaking with other people that there's so many just neuroscience tools that we can use. Mm-hmm. So I started with the with the surface things and just started researching and teaching others because it was what I was struggling with on gratitude and appreciation and all all of those things and then what oils can you pair to to help with those things and I did a whole series on um dealing with grief and loss during this period of time, during the time that we've been in. And then um, at that point in time, I think I did one aroma freedom technique with someone because I could not even, the thought, if you go on my YouTube channel, I have playlists. I don't have one for emotional wellness because that's how uncomfortable I was with talking about emotions. Everything that has to do with emotion goes under mental wellness. That sounds... That sounds nicer. That sounds better. More <laughs> sciencey. Yeah, more sciencey. Who wants to talk about emotions? Mm-hmm. Um, so I needed an aroma freedom technique just to start talking and teaching on emotions because I had all these classes and all of a sudden we're stuck at home and people are like, "What we need is this," and I'm like, "I don't, I don't do that. I don't teach. <laughs> <laughs> I teach about high blood pressure and I teach about all this. I don't do emotions, but even." And the, there was an organization I was working with, Healthy Pontiac, and I was supposed to be the self-care. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're going to switch this over to talking about emotions. So I did a Roman Freedom Technique just to get through that block of me trying to talk about emotions. And then more recently with a lot of the other situations that I've did, because within that period of time, right before, three months before, I had um, a really good friend that died from cancer. I had both of my grandparents die. And then we went into, and then we went into lockdown. So I was like ready to, you know, do all this self-care, do all these things. So I was in the middle of grief. I I was laid off from my job in April for, for six weeks and I was at home with my thoughts. And so Again, started with the, doing a aroma freedom technique to kind of release that, doing a lot of research and using of my oils to get through that. And then continuing the process and dig deeper and dig deeper and did several sessions with you to, to get through some other blocks. Um, have been collaborating with another amazing person that uses touch and visualization called Havening to do that. Yeah. Uh, online courses that have to do with emotional growth. Like I've found out about another core thing that I need to work on. And there's something called the personal development school where she helps you work on those core attachment issues. And so I will do that a lot. Um, I have salt lamps, everything that I can think of is what I do to try to survive emotionally. If it comes across my desk, I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. Let me try that. That's really good. And and I like your focus on the emotional health. And even though it's uncomfortable that you actually used essential oils to help you get into talking about your emotions and, and opening up to the possibilities. But did you find that it did impact then your mental health and your physical health to address those emotional issues? Absolutely. Um, before dealing with the emotional issues. And again, I somewhat dealt with them because I had, I remember the first time I did the aroma freedom technique with that practitioner, she was like, I don't even know, how have you been like going through this? I'm like, well, the feelings kit. I just, I just oil up enough so that it brings the level up is what I would do. You know, I never dealt with the emotions. I would just oil up, oil up, oil up. Okay, we're back up here now. Uh Um, She's like, no, you need to 
<laughs> go underneath. Um, so that had been been wonderful, but actually dealing with more of the core issues, um, I have less tension on a regular basis. I just walked around like stressed all the time. I just walk because I'm a workaholic and perfectionist and I just almost always had tension in my neck and just, again, grab oils to get rid of that tension. Now, making sure on the days that I remember to, making sure that I have have my have my aroma reset mix and I do some havening, I do some touch. On the days that I do definitely do that when I'm not stressed, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't need to put something on for my neck t- tension because I've released those emotions and it's not causing me that stress. Um, and then after doing the several sessions with you, I wake up before my alarm and I wake up at different times every day. Like I, I usually wake up around the same time. I usually wake up around eight o'clock, but last night I had an event that I stayed up late with my friends. I set my, I was like, I'm not going to get up till late. I set my alarm and I still woke up 30 minutes before my alarm today. And yesterday I woke up early and I woke up way before my alarm yesterday. So um, there's been more mental clarity. There has been a lot of physical benefits from making sure that I take care of my emotions. Yeah, that's, um, and it does affect sleep because the brain needs that time to process those emotions and all the stuff and to file the day away. And when we don't address it, it's got to sleep more to find places to put all the things because it's got a backlog of work to do. (laughs) So, and um, so what I'm hearing too is take a little time every day to address those things. Absolutely. Without a doubt. That's so helpful. Um, And again, because I was up late last night, I probably didn't do all the things that I needed to this morning but thankfully before i get into the rest of my day i will definitely do some journaling and oil up more and do all the things that it just helps with productivity it helps with mood it it just really overall helps with with so many things that i can't even explain nice nice so what's your favorite oil my very favorite oil is joy Joy Blend is my favorite oil. So that was that was the gateway to helping me um, understand the, that oils could affect the emotions. And, and again, that for me and me letting other people use it, that is an oil blend that can take someone from, I've seen it and use it on myself, from hysterical to calm. Mm, like if wow. that's what they need. So I've done it twice where I was at a um, restaurant. We were doing a class. I went to the bathroom and someone was triggered by someone and she was crying hysterically. I don't know what it was, but at the end I heard her say something about the kids and the cages and Trump or whatever. She was triggered. She was, she was crying hysterically. So I went back to our table. I came with joy. I was like, put this on your wrist, deep breaths, had her do some deep breaths for about two minutes and she calmed down. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards she was done in the bathroom. She's like, what is that? (laughs) Like, I need it. And I was like, here you go. Give her the bottle. And then another time um, I was at my family reunion and uh, some of my second or third cousins, their father had just died. Same thing in the bathroom, hysterical, can't take this right now. Joy, deep breathing, two minutes, no longer hysterical. So these are people that don't know anything about essential oils, don't even know what I gave them, don't even know why I gave it to them, and went from hysterical to calm by using deep breathing in the oils for two minutes. That's beautiful that you you did that for them and that they they got the benefit too and that you gave them what they needed. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to post this in the group and post this on YouTube. We had some technical issues, so sorry about that. Yep. And um, so it was really good. Do you have anything to offer in closing to our group 
Um, just, I guess the, just the offer of hope, because and that's what I just try to share with everybody. And there's hope that tomorrow can be better and just enjoy the process. Like, I think the, the important part about doing this series is that being an overcomer is a, is a process. I have my conqueror shirt on today. Like I didn't have the best morning whatsoever today. And and the last two weeks I've had triggers, but when I have those triggers, I have the tools to get through it. Like I don't, I'm not destroyed for an entire weekend. I'm not in bed for an entire weekend. I have the tools. So everyone has the ability to be an overcomer and we have the, there's hope for that through prayer, through study and through all of these tools that Jehovah God has given us. And so mm-hmm. just keep going because there is hope for a better mm-hmm. tomorrow. That is beautiful. Thank you so much, Tashina. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording.